in the last video, in case you're following along. We did uh, calculate the work for a line integral, but we only did very simple ones. We only did ones where this integration, especially the limits of integration, were, were kind of, they just made sense. They just popped out and we didn't have to worry about it. But what if you do have to worry about it? So just a quick review, uh, we did this problem. I wanna, I wanna do this. We did this going from y1 to y2, and we found that the work done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this over here, the work done was negative mg, uh, it was y2 minus y1. And that was the work done by the gravitational force. We already did that. If you need to look at that again, if you can't find these videos, just comment. I usually reply uh, to the comments down below. Okay, so, but what if the path is not so trivial? What if instead of going this way, I wanna go to this point over here. So I wanna go from x1, y1 to x2, y2 along that path. That's a, it's a little bit more difficult and we'll do one more complicated than that. But let's just say we wanna calculate the work along that path. Okay, well let's just do the whole thing again, right? So I have right here an object, there's my force. Uh, the force is still, I'm gonna write it out as zero x hat minus mg y hat. That's still my force. And I still have uh, dr is dx x hat plus dy y hat. That's still true. And I still get f dot dr is the dot product. So it's going to be 0 times dx minus mg times dy. So now I can integrate. Work. I'm really bad with space here. I want to just delete that. Delete. The, this is the deleter. Okay. Work is the integral from 1 to 2 of f dot dr. So that's going to be the integral from one. And notice I'm doing generic one to two. I didn't really say what they are. Of I'm going to write it out as zero dx minus mg dy. Parentheses. And you see we have a problem there. Though even though there's a zero dx, well, let's just drop the zero dx. Okay, zero times dx is zero. So that makes it easier. So I get uh, the integral from point one to point two of negative mg dy. So this stuff only depends on y. So I only need the y coordinates of these points up here. So I can actually write this as the integral negative mg dy from y1 to y2. Now it's the exact same integral we had before. So the work would be negative mg y from y1 to y2. And boom, negative mg y2 minus y1. It's the same thing. So the work done going from here to there is the same as that. Now, how do you move along the path? I, I skipped something, right? Because why would this object move along that path if there's a downward gravitational force on it? It wouldn't move in a straight line. Well, there has to be some other force acting on it, the normal force. And I didn't include that. That's the N. But Let's just calculate the work done by the normal force. So work n is going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of n dot dr. But notice that we don't even have to do this because this angle between those two is 90 degrees, so the dot product is 0, so I get 0, the integral of 0. I don't even have a dr, so it's just 0. I'm not doing anything. Okay. So I didn't have to include that force. So that is indeed the work done by gravity. Okay. Let's do a more interesting case. Where we really have to think about how we do an integral in two dimensions that's not what we would think. I want to use uh, a special make-believe force. F equals, uh, what did I use? C y x hat minus C x y hat. That's the force. And c is just a constant because let's just say c is equal to one newton per meter just to make things easier. But I didn't want to I didn't want to just put y x hat x y hat because then the units don't work. And I'm a units believer. I believe in units because units believe in me. 
you got to do the units. Okay. What does this even look like? Let's just sketch this out, right? So if here I have um, the x-axis and the y-axis, if I'm right here on the x-axis, as I move further along the x-axis, what happens to the force? Well, if I'm on the x-axis, y is zero, but x right here is getting larger, so that's uh, going to be in the negative direction. So this is going to be like that. And then as I get closer to the origin, it looks like that. As I get further from the origin, it looks like that. And then the opposite is true over here. And then if I move in the y direction along this path, the further I get away, it's going to be more in the x direction. And then over here in the negative direction. You don't need to know this, but you can see that it makes this like uh, circular shape. Whereas you get closer to the origin, the force is smaller in magnitude, and then it's always going to point in this clockwise direction. You don't really need to know that, but it kind of helps to kind of picture what's going on. Now, suppose I want to find the work due to that force for this path. I'm going to go from the point 0, 1, this is point 1, in a straight line down to here, 1, 0, and that's point 2. So let's calculate the work for this force. So I already have an expression for the force. What do I need next? I need an expression for dr, right? Because work is the integral from point 1 to point 2, f dot dr. Well, again, dr is just in Cartesian coordinates. dr is dx x hat plus dy y hat. So let's do the dot product, f dot dr, not too hard. I'm going to leave c as, I'll, I'll leave it in there. I'll leave it in there. Okay, so c, this is going to be this times dx, so I get cy dx minus cx dy. And that gives me the integral, work is the integral from point 1 to 2 of cy dx minus cx dy. And what do I do? What do I do? Well, I, I, there's clearly a problem here, right? Because I have y dx, x dy, and I don't even know about the limits of integration. Let's just break this into two integrals so I can integrate cy dx minus the integral of cx dy. And this is still from point 1 to point 2, point 1 to point 2. And now we have a couple options here, okay? Let's go with the option of I want to integrate this one over x and that one over y. So this would actually be x1 to x2, and this would be y1 to y2. But I still have a problem. I have a y in there. I can't integrate. I have an x in there. I can't integrate. So what we need to do is to get a relationship between x and y from the path. This is where the path comes in, right? So here, I can, you can write the equation of a line here, y equals negative x plus 1. That's the equation line, because if it has a slope of negative 1, I think that's, I picked some easy numbers. And then it has a y-intercept of 1. I mean, I don't have to de derive that, do I? I think you're cool with that. I think you're cool with that. Okay. So if that's the case, I can take that expression for y and plug it in right there. And then what do I put in for x over there? Well, I can solve this for x. So let's solve this for x. I'm going to say, uh, negative x equals y minus 1, x equals uh, 1 minus y. That's right, right? Okay. So now my work becomes the integral from, I'll put it as x1 to x2 of c, y is going to be equal to uh, negative x plus 1 dx plus the integral from y1 to y2 of negative cx, which is going to be this, 1 minus y dy. We can do these integrals, right? Okay, the c factors out. The integral of negative x is going to be negative x squared over 2, and that's going to be x plus x. And I'm going to evaluate the limits from x1 right here, which is 0, 
to x1, x2, which is 1. And then over here, I have, uh, let's put this as minus, uh, and this is going to be c, minus c. The integral of 1 is just y. And the integral of that's going to be minus y squared over 2. And then here, I'm going from limits of uh, 1 to 0. Oh my gosh, my 1 came off at the bottom. That's better. OK. So c is 1. So I get negative 1 half plus 1 is going to be 1 half. So this is 1 half. And then here I have uh, 1 minus 1 half. So do I get 0? Or did I do something wrong? Two, where to get the two? Oh, I did it from two. That's fine. Uh, wait, let's see. So negative a half plus one minus, and this is going to be one half. So I get zero. I think I get zero. Oh, no, 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 because I'm going backwards. So I also get minus one half. So this is going to be equal to minus one half, and this is the final of zero minus that. So it's going to be one, I think. I'm, but you get the idea, right? OK, so, but the important, now there is another way. There is another way to do this. Um, it's possible, and you're going to get the same thing. It's possible instead of substituting in for y, I could find dx in terms of y. I can convert this into a y integral. So over here, if I take my relationship between y and x, which is the path, and I take the derivative of both sides, I get dy equals negative dx. So if I wanted to replace the dx with negative dy, that would work. But then I have to change the limits of integration too, and you should get the same thing, even though I'm pretty sure I made a mistake down here, but I'm fine with it because I'm not going to redo this video, and I think overall it's still pretty good. Okay. So what I'm going to do in the next video is to show you how to do a numerical line integral for both this case right here and the case with the Earth, where we move from the Earth to the other point right there. So I'm going to do both of those line integrals numerically. You just have to wait for that one. I'm probably going to do it right now. I don't know. If I'm wearing the same shirt, I'm doing it the same day. But does it matter? The internet goes on forever, so it's fine. Okay. I'll see you guys later.